how to do some basic HTML. That stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it's behind every website. Um, so let's take this Google Classroom page, for example. If I right-click on it and choose View Page Source, you'll see all this stuff. Boy, that's overwhelming. But some of this is uh, HTML, so some of these are tags. There's a lot of JavaScript and other stuff on here as well. Let's just go to another website. Let's take a look at this Google page here. If I right click on this, go to view page source. Here you'll see some of, some of these basic tags that you're going to learn today. All right, so um, that's basically what we're doing. You're going to make a, a web page and you're going to host it online and then everybody can take a look at it. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to start off with some just some basic tags. First, I'm going to show you how to use this program called Replit. It's a free program. It allows you to do HTML online. So uh, just go to your Google Classroom. Here it says Replit Sign Up. Just click on that and it should go to uh, a student view. So if we go to uh, Replit, you should see that there's ADST here. If you click on that, then it takes you to any assignments that we have. Uh, but to start, we're just gonna go to my repls. I don't know how you pronounce that, but that's how it looks to me. Uh, and then you're gonna go new repl. And then you're going to choose HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Give your website a name. For this one, uh, we're just going to call it Basic Tags. And we're going to hit Create. OK. So this brings you into this view here. Um, and it's really nicely laid out. And this whole thing is free. Um, over here, you see your files. We're not going to play around with JavaScript too much. So in fact, you can actually get rid of that right now. You can just click on the three dots and delete. And later on, after this course, if you plan to learn some JavaScript, then you can just add a file to that. But we're just going to keep these two, index.html and styles.css. Styles.css we'll cover in another lesson. Today we're going to focus on this web page. So anything that is named something.html is a web page. And your home page, that means the first page that people see when they go to your website should always be named index.html, which it already is here. Here are the basic tags that have already been added for you in Replit. So on the very top, you need to have this. It's called a doc type, um, just exactly as it's shown there. So basically, your task is just not to delete any of these because it's already created for you. Um, if you were creating this from scratch, then of course you can um, you have you would have to add all these different things. Okay. So let's get out of that and let's change the settings so that you guys can actually see. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And let's get out of there. Okay. So now we've got this. These are the basic, this is what we call the HTML skeleton. It's basically on every single web page that you see on the internet that uses HTML. So Basically, there are a number of tags in HTML. All you're doing is you're telling your web browser, and right now I'm using Chrome as my web browser, but you can also use Internet Explorer, Safari, those are all Firefox, those are all different types of web browsers. Web browsers are programs that read HTML. Okay, so when you create these different tags, the web browser is able to decide what to show based on what tags you, you added. So this basic skeleton exists on every web page. We're going to add to this, of course, but this is kind of what you always start with. So here we have the doc type, which basically tells the web browser, hey, we're going to start using HTML. And then we have 
an HTML tag. So here, this is what we call a start tag, and this is what we call an end tag. And typically, you have a start tag and an end tag to tell the web browser where your uh, where everything starts and where everything ends. So my HTML is going to start up here on line two, and it's going to end on line twelve. Now take a quick moment here to determine what is the difference between a start tag and an end tag. See if you notice the difference between a start tag and an end tag. Okay, so if you say that there is a forward slash like this here, forward slash in front of the end tag, you are correct. So to indicate that this is where HTML will end, we put the uh, end tag here and it has a forward slash instead of uh, what you see here. Okay, now you have this head section. So inside your HTML, you always have a head section, which ends here, and then a body section, which ends here. And then you've got all this other stuff that we won't uh, talk too much about. We're just going to make one change here. So you go ahead, um, hopefully while you're watching this video, you're following along, you go ahead and change the title. And for my title, I'm going to make a, a, a website about, let's say, uh, turtles. Turtles are fun. That's the topic of my website. Okay, so one change I made is what the title's going to be. And you can see nothing shows up here. Even after you hit run, nothing shows up here. That's because this title is actually just changing what shows up in the, the tab, which is over here. Okay, uh, but of course, this doesn't change this tab because we're in the middle of a program called Replit, so it's going to show that tab. But when you preview it over here, if I click on this preview in a new tab, you can see Turtles are fun. Indeed, you did change the title. Okay. So that's one change we made to line six. We added turtles are fun instead of what was there before. In line 10, we're just gonna, because we're not doing any JavaScript, we're just gonna delete that. Okay, so that is your basic skeleton for HTML. Now, let me, let me add some really basic stuff here. Let's, uh, let's write some stuff about turtles. Um, first of all, when I hit run, there's nothing here. The title is changed in the tab. I actually want an actual title for this page. So to do that, I'm going to have to type out a title. Everything that shows up on the page from this point on goes inside the body tags. This is where the body begins on line nine. This is where, where the body ends at the bottom here. Okay, anything that I type in between the start and end tags for body um, are going to actually show up on the page. So here I go. Um, uh, turtles are fun website for kids. Okay, uh, nothing showing up until I press run. So I'm going to type a bunch of information about turtles. Uh, there are four types of turtles. One is uh, Donatello. Another is Leonardo. Then there is Raphael. And and finally, Michelangelo, Michael, Michelangelo. <laughs> All right. So let's hit run and see what happens. Oh, that's not what you would expect given the format that's here. So one thing that you'll notice when you're doing this is that 
the web browser doesn't care if you pressed enter twice or 300 times. It doesn't really care unless you give it certain tags. Okay, so we need to have a tag to tell it to actually drop a line from this point down. So to tell it to drop a line, we use this tag. So as you're typing this out, try to also try try to keep in mind what tags I'm using and try to remember them for your own use later on. So we've got the break tag. Okay. I should also mention that on the Google Classroom site, if you go to uh, this reference right beside where the replit sign up is, if you click on that, it tells you all the different tags you can use. There's tons of reference sheets online. Just search for, just Google search for HTML reference. You'll find tons of them. But I really like this one because it's kind of all in one place. And if you look at break, there it is. Okay. The way I typed it does not include the space in the forward slash, but uh, this one does. And that's because the, the version of HTML that I'm showing you is a little bit newer. So we don't have to hit the slash anymore. Okay, so just BR is fine. All right, so now let's run this. And hopefully after kids, it's gonna go enter and then enter again, because I put two break tags. There it is. Now, obviously I need one here as well. So I'm gonna type in a break tag there um, and maybe maybe after each turtle and I know some of you who don't get the reference might think this is very strange uh, but I grew up in the, the 80s and, and went to high school in the 90s so I know these as the ninja turtles and you probably saw them when you were little as in some iteration maybe in a movie or something like that okay there we go. So you can see the break tags actually worked. Now, looking at this title here, I mean, I can preview it in the in the tab as well, where I can see the, the, the title up here and the title tags, and then my heading here. It's not really much of a heading because it's just all caps. It's the same size as all the other font. So to emphasize this um, heading here, I'm going to use what's called a heading tag. So a heading tag basically is used for outlining. Uh, there exists six different heading tags and they're conveniently called H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. H1 is the largest, so I'm going to use H1 for this. And as you can guess, as you go up in number, H6 is the smallest. Okay, so you can use those. I'm just gonna use H1. So I'm gonna surround, remember I talked about start tags and end tags and how important they are? This is where I want my heading one to start. Well, if I don't end it anywhere, I'm gonna hit run, just pretending that I forgot and I try never to forget because it messes up your web page. If I don't end heading one anywhere, what do you think is going to happen? And if you said this, then you're absolutely correct. If it doesn't, if you don't tell the browser to end heading one somewhere, it's just going to continue. The entire page is going to be heading one. So I actually want to end just before the break here. So I'm going to put it in here, end tag, heading one. Okay, and you saw that I quickly entered it without typing there, and that's because sometimes uh, replit, let me just do that again. When you type in the angle bracket, it already knows, oh, you want to end what you just started. So you can actually just click on that or press tab and it'll auto complete. Okay. All right, so now if I hit run, it's only making this title here, this heading, heading one, not the rest of it. But the rest of it, maybe I want to emphasize certain things as well. 
So there are four types of turtles. What if I want to, let's say, bold the word turtles? Well, if I look on my reference here, click on my reference, I can see all the different types of text tags. Bold is B. And it requires an end tag, of course. Otherwise, the whole page would be bold. So if I want to just bold the word turtles, then I would surround the word turtles with the B tags like that. Oh, let me just finish it off by hitting tab because it's already it already knows I, I want to close it off. So there's my end tag. Okay. Now you can see turtles is bolded. What if I wanted to italicize uh, Leonardo? Well, again, if you look at the reference, italicize is I. And of course, if I don't end uh, uh, italicize, then the entire thing from Leonardo on will be italicized. Okay, so whenever you see that, whenever you see the same style um, kind of cover more than you wanted it to, check to make sure you have a proper end tag somewhere. And in this case, I don't, so I'm going to add it right here. That's where I want it to end. So only Leonardo is italicized. Underline. Let's underline Raphael. It's you. And I want to end it here. So now Raphael is underlined. And finally, Michelangelo, one of my favorite turtles. Let's do something special for Michelangelo. Let's actually combine the different styles. When you combine styles, it's just as easy as putting one style inside another. It doesn't matter which one you start off with. Let's say, okay, let's start off with underline. Let's underline, italicize, and bold Michelangelo because he's so special. So I'm going to put underline. Right, so now Michelangelo is underlined, but also I want to italicize. So around the underline tags, I'm going to put the italicize tags or italics tags. So now you can see Michelangelo is underlined and italicized. Well, I could also bold Michelangelo at the same time. So I'm going to put bold tags surrounding all of the other tags I added both the underline and italicized tags. So now Michelangelo is bolded, italicized, and underlined. So you can actually combine different tags like that, which is pretty cool. All right. So let's, let's do one more thing. Uh, those are some of the basic tags uh, we're going to handle in this lesson. Um, and one more. Uh, just to make it more interactive, we're going to actually add a link. So this is the going back to the very origins of a web page. Um, and it's all it was all made for hypertext, which is basically linking from one page to another. When it was created, it was a bunch of scientists um, and also defense researchers who wanted to uh, just a, a good way to communicate. Um, and then when the World Wide Web came around, uh, it was a cool way to, to share information by linking different bits of information together. So let's create a link. Uh, first, I'm going to add a break here just to make it neater. Um, here is a website for the ninja Turtles. Heroes in a half shell. Turtle power. Okay, so I'm going to first of all think about. Um, well, let's let's just look for a website first. Uh, let's go Ninja Turtles and see what we can find. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, um, there's some good videos. And you can pick your own website if you want. There doesn't seem to be any central website for Ninja Turtles. Okay, well, let's just go Wikipedia then. 
Okay, so let's say I want to use this website. Whenever you want to capture the URL for a website, always click in the address bar here and hit Control C on a PC or Command C on a Mac and it'll copy it. Okay, the reason why I want you to copy the URL is because if you wanted to memorize and then retype all of this, you're probably going to hit a wrong key somewhere or make a typo. And that becomes really, really frustrating. So uh, just Command C or Control C to copy that address. And then we're going to keep it on the um, clipboard. We're going to use it in a sec. We're not going to use it right away. So we've copied it. I'm going to show you how to uh, create a link. First of all, think about a dis something something descriptive that you want people to click on. Okay, so you could say click here, but that's kind of lame because nobody knows what they're clicking on. So you want to have something a bit more descriptive, like uh, Ninja Turtles Wikipedia page. Okay, something descriptive. Okay, obviously that's not a link. So if I, this is not clickable, right? So uh, to make it into a link, you have to add what's called an anchor tag around this. Okay, so now this is a link. Well, not really. Okay, you kind of got, you got to start on it, uh, the web browser understands that it's probably going to be a link, but it's missing some information. And that information is the web address, the URL, which we copied, which is sitting on our um, clipboard right now, ready to be pasted. So in order to add the URL to a link, what you do is you go inside the start tag for anchor, and you hit space, leave a space, and type a H R E F. There it is. So I'm just going to click on click on it, and it completes it for me. So H R E F equals, and then quotes. There's always quotes after an equal sign. Uh, that's exactly where you're going to paste the URL. So because I've already copied it, and if you've lost it, go back and copy the URL again. Uh, but we're going to hit Control V to paste or on the Mac, Command-V to paste. There we go. And this gets really long, so let me just shrink this preview window down so you can see this whole long thing. Okay? And that's how you create a link. So you surround something that you want people to click on, something descriptive, with anchor tags, and then href equals, and this is uh, the web page. So let's preview this. We could run this and you can see that it's a link, but it's kind of small. So I'm going to hit the open a new tab button and let's see if it works. If I click on this, boom, it goes to Wikipedia. One minor detail that um, I don't like about how we did this is that it completely replaces our nice website that we spent a little bit of time working on. We never want that to happen. We want, when you click on this, for it to open in a new tab. So let's let's force that to happen. And you can force it to happen. So basically, you have the a href equals, you've got the address. Right after the end quote for this address, like right here, you can hit space again and add one more detail inside that anchor tag. So make sure you're inside the two um, angle brackets for that anchor tag. And you're going to type in one more thing. And this is going to be target. Target equals. And again, after the equal sign, there's all these quotes. And you type in underscore blank. That will actually force it into a new tab. So let's preview that. Click on this. Boom. It opens in the new tab. Amazing. 
Okay. So we went through a lot already and I want you to practice this. Uh, by the way, Replit's really cool because it's already published. Over here is your URL to this website or web page you've been practicing. So you can actually take this URL, share it with somebody, and they'll see exactly uh, what you're seeing as you're editing this. So it's already published online. Okay, so take a look at the reference if you're, you're wanting to go ahead and learn uh, a few more different tags. The most important thing is to practice. Uh, watch this video over again, press pause, mess around, play with it. You're not going to harm anybody. If you have any questions, email me or meet me on Google Meet. Um, have fun. Enjoy.